Looking at art from around the world, we notice repeated linear patterns appear frequently, even in art from very distant regions and times. These patterns all look similar in construction. Could there be a mathematical way to classify how they are made? These simple, linear, artistic patterns are an example of freeze patterns, patterns which display different symmetries along a line. The symmetry of freeze patterns can be constructed using only four different operators, translation, rotation, reflection, and glide reflection. The first operator is translation. The translation operator acts by taking each point in the original image and moving it a specified distance along the x-axis. For example, using a translation distance of 3 units, the point 0, 1 would be translated to 3, 1. Here, we see that the original image has been translated a distance of 3 units along the positive direction. The second operator is rotation. This is best described by using polar coordinates. The rotation operator rotates the original image by 180 degrees around a rotation center. We will use the origin as our rotation center to simplify calculations. In polar coordinates, the rotation operator acts on each point of the original image by maintaining the distance from the origin r while adding 180 degrees to the angle theta. For example, the polar point 1, 0 would be rotated to 1, 180. Using the image of the foot, this is easy to see. The next operator is reflection. There are two types of reflection, horizontal reflection over the x-axis and vertical reflection over the y-axis. In a horizontal reflection, the x-coordinate of the original point does not change, and the y-coordinate is negative of the original. So the point 1, 1 would be horizontally reflected to 1, negative 1. Here, the foot is reflected horizontally. For vertical reflections, the x-coordinate becomes the original's negative, while the y-coordinate is kept the same. The original point, 1, 1, would be vertically reflected to negative 1, 1. Here, the foot is reflected vertically. The final operator is the glide reflection. The glide reflection is a combination of horizontal reflection and translation. First, the original image is horizontally reflected, then, this new image is translated by a specified translation distance. For example, if the translation distance was 3, the point 1, 1 would be glad reflected to 4, negative 1. We will demonstrate this using a translation distance of 3 units. The original image is first horizontally reflected, and then this new image is then translated a distance of 3 units. The combination of these operators result in seven unique patterns. The first of these, F1, is a result of only translation. The original image is repeatedly translated along the x-axis. Here, we see the foot has been translated multiple times without any reflection or rotation, creating a simple pattern. F1 can also be referred to as a hop. The next pattern, F2, is a combination of translation and glide reflection. First, the original image is translated along the x-axis. Then, each translated image undergoes a glide reflection. F2 is also called a step, as the resulting pattern looks like footprints. The next pattern, F3, is a result of translation and vertical reflection. First, the original image is repeatedly translated along the x-axis. Then, each image is vertically reflected. This pattern is sometimes called a slide. Next, F4 is a result of translation and rotation. First, the original image is repeatedly translated along the x-axis. Then, each image is rotated. Recall that for freeze patterns, each rotation is 180 degrees around the rotational origin. The point on the x-axis below the center of the image is used as the rotational origin. The next pattern, F5, results from translation, glide reflection, and vertical reflection. First, the original image is translated repeatedly along the x-axis. Then, each image undergoes a glide reflection. Finally, all the images are then vertically reflected. The pattern that results from F5 is also referred to as a spinning slide.
F6, the next pattern, results from translation and horizontal reflection. First, the original image is translated repeatedly along the x-axis. Then, each image is horizontally reflected. This pattern resembles a jump. The final freeze pattern, F7, results from translation, vertical reflection, and horizontal reflection. First, the original image is repeatedly translated along the x-axis. Then, each image is horizontally reflected. Next, each image is vertically reflected. The F7 pattern is also called a spinning jump. Notice how all the patterns undergo translation as the first step. Since freeze patterns are combinations of four operators, you may be asking yourself why are there only seven patterns? Intuitively, Four operators would produce 2 to the 4th power, or 16 patterns. However, the result of some operators can be achieved through a combination of two others. For example, a horizontal reflection followed by a vertical reflection is identical to a rotation. Similarly, a glide reflection followed by a horizontal reflection is identical to a simple translation. The number of patterns possible is further reduced as the combination of some operators can result in no change to a pattern. For example, a vertical and horizontal reflection followed by a rotation results in the original image. Because some operators can be combined in different ways to form the same final image or the original image, there are only seven distinct freeze patterns. This simple chart clearly shows this concept as there are only seven patterns that can be reached. Now that we know how freeze patterns are created, and there are seven different types of freeze patterns, we can classify these patterns that we find in art. We can do so by checking what operators created the pattern. All we need to do is look for horizontal reflections, glide reflections, rotations, and vertical reflections. Let's start with a simple example. This is an example of a late geometric vase from Greece. Let's first focus on the band of the vase that shows symmetric ducts. Each duct is clearly translated along the x-axis. Since there are no other symmetries, this pattern is a result of only translation. This means that the pattern is an example of F1. Now, look at the band below the ducts. Each downward pointing triangle is translated along the x-axis and then glide reflected. This band is an example of F2 symmetry. Almost all Greek geometric bases display examples of various freeze patterns. Now, let's try a more complicated pattern found in a tile frieze from Madrid, Spain. First, notice how the dragon is translated along the x-axis. We can also see that each dragon is vertically reflected. This pattern is a combination of translation and vertical reflection. We can now classify this as an F3 pattern, or slide. Let's now consider a very complicated looking pattern. Here is a freeze pattern from the back of a bench in Seville, Spain. Although this pattern looks confusing, it is quite simple when broken into the operators used. First. The translation is easy to see with the repeating octagon. We will use the top left quarter of the octagon as the original image. It is also simple to see that the combination of both horizontal and vertical reflections form the entire octagon. Therefore, since it is a combination of translation, vertical, and horizontal reflection, this is an example of F7. Because freeze patterns are constructed using only four operators, each complicated looking design is easy to classify. Let's recap. There are four operators used to create freeze patterns, translation, rotation, reflection, and glide reflection. A combination of these operators result in seven distinct patterns. We also showed how simple it is to classify these patterns. Thanks for watching, and we hope you learned something about freeze patterns. Keep your eyes open, as you might just notice some in the world around you.